I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking now with Leah Winter Dean, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know, where you teach and what subject or what, what grade level. Uh, well, I teach at Dudley Elementary School in Center Unified School District, and I've been there three years. I teach second grade, and before that, I taught for 14 years in San Francisco also mostly first and second grade. Okay, so talk about second grade and you know how you can see the students who are kind of maturing a little bit because from first grade they're still a little bit beyond kindergarten but once you know you're getting them ready for third grade which is a big transitional year for kids. Yes, yes. Tell us about the typical student or where they should be. Well second from first to second grade is quite a leap and um, in second grade most students um, are reading some words, you know, stories. Um, they're writing. Um, they love school. They're independent. One of the things I love about second grade is they, they're a little more independent than first grade. They're able to do much more on their own and they still have this love and passion for school and excitement and enthusiasm and they love their teacher and, you know, they, they want to come every day. Uh, so that's exciting. So what are the it's expectations, exciting. though, for, for these students? The expectations is that they're able to read fiction and nonfiction stories, um, answer questions about what they're reading, um, maybe explain what they've read to another student or to an adult. Um, they're able to add and subtract, you know, three-digit numbers with regrouping. Um, they have a strong number sense. They're beginning to understand time, a um, little bit of money, um, but they're, they're becoming more responsible for their own learning at that age. And they will be expected to do much more writing when they get to third grade. So it's a big, a big push for us as second grade teachers. So it's a real transition for them and you have to get them ready for that next step. We do, we do. And also in third grade they begin st uh, standardized testing. So in second grade we do assessments using our curriculum. Um, as well as informal assessments every day, but there's no standardized uh, testing in the same way. So that is also something that we try to prepare them for. So what are some of the challenges you face uh, every day as a second grade teacher, some of the things sp specifically for your grade level? Uh, well, many challenges. <laughs> um, certainly uh, just being able to reach all of my students, you know, when you have a large group and you have students um, who range so far, the spread is so wide in terms of their ability. So you, have, you may have students who aren't reading at all, and then you may have students who are reading at a fourth or fifth grade level. So that is a big challenge, um, really in any grade. Uh, but in second grade, certainly a big challenge to be able to support all those students at the levels where they need support. And how important, um, not just at that level, but every level, is, is working with the family and the connection with, with the family to make sure the student is properly engaged? Critical, it's critical. You know, um, not only is it important for myself as an educator to feel like I can make connections with the families and have a sense of what the student's coming from and what kind of support they're able to get at home, um, but it's also important for the students to understand that school is not an island uh, but school and home are connected. You know, families and teachers are talking and we're all there to support them and, and um, make sure that they are successful. And what are some of the things you do to foster that connection, to make sure that the parents know that they're welcomed? And Well, not only are they welcome, but they're kind of expected to really be active participants in the education. Uh, I, I try a variety of strategies and every year is a little bit different um, depending on my class population and um, the family backgrounds, um, but I make sure to let my families know that I'm available, accessible, that they can come by and see me, they can email me, they can call the school, they can send notes in so they'll get mess uh, messages to me. Um, I invite them to volunteer in any way that works for them, so if they want to take workbooks home and tear pages out, fabulous. If they want to come into the classroom and teach the students about something from their culture, wonderful. If they just want to come in and read with small groups, terrific. 
Um, and I understand there are families that can't volunteer at all, so I just make sure that they are updated on what we're studying each week. They see our spelling words, they know the stories we're reading, um, our comprehension focus, and I sent home the chapter updates for math at the beginning of every chapter so that they know the upcoming math concepts. And I also give them tips and strategies on things they can do at home. And, and at that age level, um, students are still excited about their parents coming to volunteer in they, class. They mostly are. Yeah. They mostly are. They, they, because, like I said, it's really important for them to know that there is a homeschool connection. Mm -hmm. And so when they see their parents in the classroom, you know, some of them may get nervous. And, uh, but for the most part, they're excited and they like it. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to see. So you've been teaching for 17, 18 years, is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. Uh, what kind of changes in education have you seen over that span of time? Well, one, I would say the biggest thing that I've noticed is that the curriculum, the concepts that are being introduced at second grade um, were introduced maybe third grade, you know, when I started, or even fourth grade, so that has changed. When we introduce certain standards and concepts um, has been a big change. And, of course, the second big change would be technology. Mm -hmm. You know, I started teaching in 2000, and um, the, the focus was not as strong on technology as it is today, and it's essential. We have to make sure our students are well-versed in all that's out there when it comes to technology and able to access it. So throughout that time then, with all those changes, there must be a, you must see a big value in professional development to keep you up, keep you up to date with things. I think you have to as a teacher, and you also have to be willing to be flexible and able to adapt and modify your mm -hmm. teaching to the current needs of your students, because the needs of your students will change based on where you're teaching, uh, what grade level, you know, what population, and um, you can kind of get in a rut, I think, and I have found the value of professional development for me is that it helps me to come to certain ideas with a fresh eye, with a new perspective. So not only are you expecting your students to be a critical thinker, but you have to be a critical I, thinker yes, too, right? Yes, I have to. <laughs> yeah, because if you're not, yes. you, you are stuck in that rut. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, yes. So what does it mean for you to be chosen as a teacher of the year? Well, it was, I, I was stunned <laughs> um, and honored. And one of the things that um, I feel really strongly about is that we're not, it takes a village when it comes to teaching. And so I didn't get here by myself. I got here with the support of my colleagues, with my family, with my husband. Um, everyone that is in a teacher's life en enables them to do their best for their students. And I collaborate with my colleagues on a daily, weekly, mm -hmm. monthly, yearly basis. So I, I wouldn't be here without all these people. Had you always wanted to be a teacher? I did. I did. I always knew I wanted to work with students, and I've done a variety of, of uh, work with children um, as I grew up and uh, became a parent and worked with, you know, my own daughter, and I actually started teaching uh, when she was in kindergarten. Uh, and so I was constantly stealing ideas from her <laughs> kindergarten teacher. Oh, this is perfect. I'm going to use this in it's my class. It's not stealing. It's borrowing. Yes. Yeah. Borrowing ideas. She shared them freely, so. There you go. Yes, yes. So if you know someone who's considering education as a profession, what's yes. your sales pitch to tell them, you know, think strongly about it? Uh, well, I think that um, teaching is certainly one of the most uh, challenging jobs in the world, but also one of the most rewarding, fulfilling, deeply personal professions you could choose. And I feel proud to be um, a part of helping our future generations become um, productive and responsible citizens. Hmm. And that's really important to me. All right, well, we congratulate you and we, and we thank, thank you, you for your time. We've thank been speaking you. with Leah Winter Dean, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for thank joining you. us. Thank you so much.